Number 22, November Juliet, Genetic Oakland Center, 128.8. 128.8, 22, November Juliet. Two, two, Papa Tango, Oakland Center, Roger. Oakland Center, November 2-2, November Juliet, 13,500, air work over Lovelock. 2-2, right, two, two, November Juliet, Oakland Center, Roger, the Lovelock altimeter, 3035. 3035, 2-2, November Juliet. 1726, contact Salt Lake Center, 132.25. 3225, United 1726. Sarah 135 Delta Golf, Reno Ground, taxi via Charlie Lima, hold short of runway 16 left. Iron Claw 1-1, I'm not receiving your transponder. Could you try recycling it? Number 1, Victor Fox Pack, contact Oakland Center 127.9 or 5. November 1, Victor Fox Pack, contact Oakland Center 127.9 or 5. Twenty-one. Iron Claw, one one. Radar contact uh, one five miles south of the Hawthorne Airport. Way one six left and right at Lima. Turn left on Alpha. One six left and right at Lima. Uh, left on Alpha. One three five. Delta Delta. Is that maintenance nine calling? Maintenance 21 at the wash rack, like to enter 16 break. Maintenance 21, give way to an arrow crossing runway 16 left and right. Behind him, proceed onto runway 16 right via Lima. Behind the arrow, uh, proceeding onto 16 right at Lima. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No tower, 1894312, ready to go on 16 right. 294312, Rena Tower, hold short, runway 16 left, traffic crossing downfield. Uh, affirmative, it'll be 16 left, and I'm holding short, 300. Southwest 9004, descend via the Keno 2, arrival to Rena Altimeter 3039. Thank you, Southwest uh, 175. Any 94312 in the tower, wind column, runway 16 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff on 16 left, 94312. Sure. Arrow 5 Delta Golf. Arrow 5 Delta Golf, cross runway 25 at Alpha. Cross 25 at Alpha, 135 Delta Golf. Green ground, maintenance 27. Minus 27, right again. At the wash rack, I'd like to get out on 16 right. Minus 27, follow your company, proceed on to runway 16 right. Following company will proceed on to 16 right. Minus 27. North Carolina approach, Delta 1569, that is 17 and a half, descending via the MyBad 2, we have November. Delta 1569, our count approach, plan visual approach, runway 16 left. Visual 16 left, Delta 
Region 89, Oakland Center, descend and maintain flight level 220. Region 89, Amen, altitude, maintain flight level 280. Eight seven two seven three North Cal. You're a contractor. Uh, one five south of Minden Airport. And again, Reno altimeter three zero three nine. You're gonna just do air work down there. Or you're gonna you're heading somewhere. November eight seven two seven three North Cal. Mooney three one two contact North Cal departure. Good day. One at Arco. Good day, nine four three one two. Three. Uh, are you continuing southbound, or are you just still maneuvering in the area? Oh, one seventy five. Taxi. Set it Delta fourteen thirty two three four zero descending three zero zero. Delta fourteen thirty two open center descend and maintain flight level two four zero. Descend maintain two four zero Delta fourteen thirty two. Maintain nine hundred thousand. Nine hundred thousand Delta fifteen sixty nine. Norco departure, money 94312, climbing through 6,500 for 14,500. Or 94312, Norco departure, ident. Number 312, right of contact, 4 south of Reno Airport. Sorry, 661 Mike, the amendment to your route advisor, ready to copy. 205, Delta 1569. Kilo, Romeo, Oscar, Sierra, Tango, then direct Wilson Creek, rest of your done change. All right, 7273, North Calipers, you're uh, barely readable. Ground maintenance 11. Maintenance 11, Renegade. Southbound 16 right, like to cross 25, please. Maintenance 11, cross runway 25 at 16 right. Crossing 25 at 16 right, maintenance 11. Number two, Papa Tango, after Lovelock cleared direct to Walty. Whiskey Alpha Lima Tango Echo, direct water, Whiskey Alpha Tango Echo Romeo, then direct Sal Municipal. Okay, direct Tango, Tango, read back correct, and descend to maintain 16,000, the found altimeter 3035. We're down to 16,000, Four two five tango. One tower southwest at one seventy five will be One seventy five, we're in the tower, wind calm, runway one six left, clear for takeoff. One six left, clear for takeoff. Six southwest one seven five. Good day. Good afternoon, southwest nine thousand four two two zero descending via the channel arrival uh, with information November. How you doing? Southwest nine thousand four North Cal approach. Advise with information off to and the approach approach one six left. All right, one six left. Can we talk out of the Yankee off clock for southwest nine thousand four? Plus 9004, sure, after clock, clear, 9 of Yankee, 1, 6, left approach. All right, Arnav right, Yankee, off of clock. Uh
All right, guys. All right, so let's see here. And weird. Hey Noel, how's this camera view looking? I said it's a little bit of like a different view. Um, how do you hear me? Of course, I don't have any background noise going on yet. Do you hear me all right? pretty well okay I don't know what else I can do about that Noel um, I've cranked up the volume on this microphone as loud as I can possibly do it you have the volume maxed okay I'm pretty much going to have the airplane noises at a dull roar so it should be okay So far, so good. Okay. Yeah. What if I... Create a second window. I'm trying to figure out how to get my Twitch chat to show up so I can see it because I updated the OBS and it's changed a little bit. Where's my channel? All right. So let me see if this works. So type something in chat, Noel, real quick. I want to see if it, I just created a pop out for the chat. So I should be able to see it a little bit easier since the update kind of made things a little wonky. So type something for me.
do you look to see chat to your right or left? Well, that's what I was just doing. So I have my monitor on the left side, or my second monitor, and then my laptop on my right. So I have chat on both, but before I updated OBS, um, I could uh, shrink the uh, broadcast thing to where I could see the chat, but now it's almost full screen. And with all the other things I have loaded on my second monitor, it's hard to see the chat window. So I had to open up a separate chat window, pop out the chat window and put it on my second monitor and that seemed to work. So now I should be able to see uh, chat. Um, like it should be there all the time, but we'll see. So for this flight, uh, let me see, we're coming over here. All right, so we got this starting off at Reno. We're gonna do VFR flying to Lake Tahoe, drop off some passengers, and then we're gonna take the uh, the Ebbets Pass through the mountain. And then we'll continue down to Mariposa, Mariposa Yosemite Airport. So it's a nice VFR day. I'll log in here. I'll check out the weather for our area. It should be pretty nice. Yeah, there's barely any clouds in California. So it's perfect. The uh, the winds are, you know, nice and calm. Variable. Reno is wind calm, so should be a decent VFR day. Already got my fuel. Got a bunch of uh, VFR traffic to look out for. That's us uh, sitting right there. So that's it. That's the uh, that's the idea. I'll stay. Don't drop me at Tahoe. Yeah. Speaking of dropping off, let's slide into uh, FS Economy and we'll load up our passengers. So we got five passengers, 70 gallons of fuel on board. So we'll come in here and uh, the fuel is fine. We're on pounds. So let's. Uh, just the weight a little bit. Take four passengers. And we'll take about 50 pounds of cargo. Uh, there we go. Then we can lower these uh, cargo. These are cargo doors here and there. So we can close the cargo doors. Same thing with this one. And uh, this is Lake Tahoe. I'm, I'm sorry, this is a Reno airport. Some guys over here fixing their uh, fixing their plane. That's a caravan. It's a Cessna caravan. So we'll shut this door. All right, let me get my checklist. First things first, turn on the fuel. And uh, turn on the battery. Turn up the mags. We'll put the uh, rich, full rich on the fuel. Open up the window. So I've added the 750, or yeah, GTN 750 to this, so it'll be uh, a lot easier. 
for lighting, we're going to want the uh, nav light and beacon. Cow flaps are closed for engine start. And we need to uh, bump the fuel. So we're going to prime the engines. All right, engines are primed. So we'll crack the throttle. We'll crank her up. Trying to get the RPM. When it's, it runs rough when it's cold, there we go. Kicked up, I'll leave it about a thousand RPM. Oil is in the green, well pressure, so that's good. Yeah, let me bring up my uh, flight information on my laptop here. So, Noel, do you like this new view with the camera? Is it a better view? Let's turn on our alternators. Auxiliary fuel pumps. Panel lights, GPS lights. We'll turn on our uh, avionics. Got a whole bunch of Garmin loading up. Yeah, you like it better? Okay. Turn on the noise canceling headset here to lower the sound a tad. Actually, let me close that window too. Um, need to lean out the engine so we don't foul plugs or sitting here idling. We need to get ATIS for Reno. Reno's ATIS is a uh, elevation is forty four fifteen. So ATIS is one thirty five point eight. Five point eight. Turn on COM two. Reno instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information uniform. Reno Tahoe International Airport. ATIS information uniform. One eight five five Zulu. Wind variable at four. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. Temperature two one. Dew point four. Altimeter three zero three seven. Arriving and departing runways 16 right, 16 left. Visual approach is in use. VFR departures contact clearance delivery. Advise on course heading, altitude, if flight following is requested. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information uniform. All right, we got uniform and it's as if we're watching a film movie pilot and from the nose of the plane, it's great, okay. All right, so we got our weather. So let's dial in our altimeter setting, which is really high today, 3037. And we'll set this one for the same thing. It's almost there. And the elevation is 4414, so we're within 70, so we're good on that. Reno clearance, since this is a Class Charlie Airport, we need to dial in 124.9. So go to clearance, ground is one uh, point niner. And uh, get things rolling. So
So for this, all I need is a, um, a uh, VFR departure clearance. It's really not anything too difficult. So I'll get that right before I'm ready to roll. Um, we're just going to do a, where is that? Which button do I want here? Here we go. So clear that message. So flight plan, we're just going to go straight to Lake Tahoe from here. And there we are sitting there in Reno. And uh, I don't think he'll give me a squat code for Charlie, but we'll, we'll see. Test our flaps, which is uh, right here. Flaps down. Flaps back up. Flaps work. Temperatures are coming up. Can do a run up once we get into the green. Gotta let the oil warm up first. And uh, let me see. So I'm just gonna hand fly it to Lake Tahoe. So I'm not gonna worry about setting up the autopilot for this. So I guess I should get my clearance up. All right, we're with uniform. Afternoon, Reno clearance, twin Cessna 1399 at Atlantic with uniform. Uh, request via far departure to the south. Did I say? 1399 Reno clearance, departure frequency 119.2, squawk 1270. Departure 119.2, squawk 1270, 1399. All right. 1399, read back, correct, and you said you're a TPM? I'm sorry, it's a twin Cessna. I'm a Cessna 310, and I'm slant cough. Uh, I don't need flight following quite yet, 1399. All right, um, 12. Seventy. We'll uh, put that into standby for right now. Actually, I'll go ahead and squawk uh, that, and then we'll do taxi light on. And the temperature is up there so do we have a run-up area we can just do it at the end of the runway All right. shit sorry oh I forgot my uh, track IR you gotta be kidding me all right I'll uh... that's all right there's no way to let me see if I can start track IR I doubt it I really doubt it probably won't pick it up Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. I'd have to restart the sim in order to use track IR. That sucks. <sighs> Eastern 649, contact Los Angeles Center 133.2. Have a great day. I don't need it. I don't need it. Okay, let's go. Here. 
For IFR, is that what you're saying to restart? No, track T R A C K. T R A C K, track I R. It's this thing. It's my, when I turn my head, I can look around, pan around. Right now, I'm just using the mouse. And that makes it very hard to do pattern work and such. So, but I'm already started. And uh, I don't feel like restarting the entire sim over. That's the only way I can get the track IR to work. So right now I'm just having to use my mouse to look around. It's all right. I'll make it work. Hey, thanks for the for the new follow there, my friend. Two new followers, thank you, appreciate it. Um, if you guys are sticking around, I'm just gonna do a quick hop to Lake Tahoe, and then I might just restart the sim. So, well, I'm I think I think I'm all right. I don't need the track anymore. All right, so let's switch to ground for Lake. I mean uh, Reno and Tower for Reno. Tower is 18.7, so we'll get tower on ready. Bozeman Tower, Skyhawk 5133 Alpha, 6000. So we got ground and tower set, and refresh our ATIS. Short instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information uniform. Still Alpha, uniform, so nothing's North changed. Northwest. Skyhawk 3-3 Alpha. And Volt. Or, yeah, Volt. Alpha, nice to have you aboard, right buddy. Now, okay. Zero. Let's uh, get our taxi clearance. Report, midfield, downwind, 3-0. Good, right. Skyhawk 3-3 Alpha. Reno ground, twin Cessna 1399 Atlantic with uniform radio taxi. So one three down and Reno ground runway uh, one six left taxi via Charlie. One six left via Charlie one three nine nine. So annoying without track IR. I'm so used to just turning my head to to look both ways. <laughs> we'll do a run up down right, here. Midfield downwind, three zero. Skyhawk three three alpha. So this three is three um. Alpha, three zero, clear to land. This is my second land, airplane zero, that I've land. ever. Uh, purchased on FS Economy, and I bought it for a really good price. It was under three hundred thousand for this Cessna, and uh, I love this Cessna, especially coupled with the G five hundred and the GTN seven fifty. It's just an awesome, awesome airplane.
All right, so runway heading is 164. So let me set the runway heading. 164. So again, I'm just gonna do a uh, VFR flight from here to Lake Tahoe, drop off passengers at Ta Tahoe. And then we're gonna pick up some passengers at Lake Tahoe. And then we're gonna fly to um, Yosemite, which is uh, over the mountains uh, to grandma's house we go. So I might take that opportunity to restart uh, the flight at Lake Tahoe just because I'm so used to having track IR when I want it, especially for pattern work. Luckily, Lake Tahoe, when I land, it's, a, it's just going to be a straight in. So it's just a straight in approach for one runway 18. Um, and then that, yeah, that's all I need. Do a run up up here. It's like another Atlantic house up here. All right, so we're gonna go to Lake Tahoe. We'll do a run up. Usually you would face into the wind, but the wind is. Uh, just wind calm. So I'm gonna do a little U-turn here and then we'll face the runway. Do a run up. All right, so temperatures should be in the green, which they are. Run up, 1700 RPM. We'll hold that. Looking for a gyro suction right around five um, in the suction, and then we'll do a mag check and we'll check for RPM drops. So, first thing, mixture full rich, bring up RPM to 1700. 1700 gyro suctions right there on the five. Alpha to park. Everything's in the Gyan green. Three, three, alpha. Do a mag check, so we're gonna look for drops on RPM. Got a drop, put that back. Got a drop, we'll check uh, engine one. Got a drop. Second mag, engine one drop. And then we'll go to flight idle, make sure the engines don't quit. And they quit. Okay, shouldn't do that. Must be the elevation and the very high pressure. So we gotta remember to keep the uh, RPMs up, otherwise we'll lose engines. That's not cool. All right, so that that's an issue, but maybe that's just, I don't know. So let's go to tower and departure is 19.2. So we're on tower, turn on our landing lights and strobe lights are on. We'll inch up here to the uh, hold and short line. Turn on our pitot heat. We'll open up our cow flaps for departure. Six six pop us in now. Get one more time for. Uh, Cindy, I get one more time. Check our controls. We got control, control. We're free and clear. 
Heading bug is set. Flight plan is set. Controls are set. We're holding short 1-6 left. And we are at Reno. Reno Tower, Twin Cessna 1399. Holding short 1-6 left. Sky 66 Alpha, radar contact 6 miles west, south to robots, VOR, past robots, altimeter, 3009 air, maintain appropriate V for altitude. Trim is set. Twin Cessna 1399, Arena Tower, runway 16 left, clear for takeoff, one course approved. 16 left, clear for takeoff, one course approved, 1399. Alright, so mixture's full. The engine should not have died like that. I'll have to test that again. But it's probably because the altimeter is just so high here and the pressure is high. We'll see. I'm definitely going to restart the sim after I get to Lake Tahoe. I do not like this. Not having the track IR is annoying to me. All right. Add in our pressure. Everything's in the green. Looking for a rotation of about uh, 90 knots right here. Miles per hour is on the outside, knots are on the inside. It's 85 and 90. Rotate, gear coming up. And we're gonna head right to uh, Tahoe. Let's bring up Lake Tahoe. I'm going to keep my landing lights on. We're going to back off the props a little bit. God, this track IR is... Take them out of the red. Leave all the landing lights on since it's a short trip anyway. So Lake Tahoe's um, don't need Reno. Lake Tahoe elevation 62, 64. 62, 64, so pattern altitude. Well, it doesn't matter, I'm going straight in. Straight in 18. So CTAF is 122.85. So we'll get that on the ready. 122.85. So, geez. It's hard to try Kai R. So we'll just do uh, 6,500. That's fine. So hold up at 6,500. Actually, anything above three or anything under 3,000 AGL, you can fly at any altitude. There's no um, plus 500 or um, even odd rule for VFR as long as you're 3,000 feet above the ground. So one three nine nine or contact contact North Departure. Over to North Departure, twin system with three nine nine. I thought she was gonna Alright, so we'll go to nineteen point two. Nineteen point two that's NorCal. Nor 
NorCal departure, twin Cessna 1399. I'm at 7,000. Cessna 1399 or NorCal departure, maintain appropriate VFR altitudes. Maintain appropriate VFR altitudes, 1399. And I don't need advisories if, if that's what you have. Uh, you're still inside the Charlie. I'll be able to cut you loose once you're outside. Oh, that's right. Yeah, disregard. Okay, um, I'm still inside the Charlie. That's right. So we're just going to go right over here to Lake Tahoe. And we'll land there. BRB. Okay, Noel. Over this hill? So I thought it was not over this hill. Let me turn on the uh, yaw damper. It might help a little bit with the bouncing around. climb because I don't remember I didn't think I needed to I guess I do need to go over this hill man this not having this track IR is so annoying Anyway, I got uh, Tahoe's frequency dialed in. Let me go through my checklists here. Temperatures. Squawk can maintain VFR. Frequency change approved. 1399. I'll talk to you shortly. Thank you. All right, so we're going to switch to VFR enter and then we're going to switch to um, Lake Tahoe's CTAF so now we're on that I'm going to gradually climb because I didn't think there was a mountain range I'd have to cross to get to Lake Tahoe but apparently there's a small one you're back okay inch my way over that way I guess it'd be a good time to take a short intermission anyway when I uh, land at Lake Tahoe I'm gonna want to um, restart the sim just so I have to track IR and I should probably let my dog out anyway Still on the main tank fuel, so that's fine. I'll leave it there. The Lake Tahoe, where's it at? It's uh, AWAS 12472. this up to 3041 I'll go over this little mountain and then we should South see it wind, light and variable. wind is light so we don't have to worry about cross winds or anything so that'll work and then uh, 
the next leg is going to be the exciting one because this leg I don't have ortho scenery for this part but I do for all of California so the rest of the flight after I take back off will all be uh, nice ortho scenery All right, so we're heading uh, west, so we're going to have to, but we're th under 3,000 AGL, so that's fine. You can fly any altitude, doesn't matter what it says here, as long as you're within 3,000 feet of the ground, you can be at any altitude you want. Unless it's a uh, highly populated area or like a major city, then you can't, but... Keep an eye on the speed. Uh, 110 is a nice, uh, that's the VUI speed, I think it's called. I'm just leaving all my lights on for visibility so other pilots in the area can see me a little early, easier since we're flying low. And we don't have radar services right now. I'm going to pick up radar services on the next leg, so we'll pick up flight following. Take screenshots again, then on the takeoff. Okay. Temperatures are still in the green. We'll close up the uh, cow flaps once we uh, get a little closer. Back off to props to about 25. back down over the lake here so we'll go ahead and we'll close these cow flaps It's, it's, it's uh, 10 miles, so about 5 miles, I'll give a call out. And I'll just call now. Lake Tahoe traffic, twin to 139 from the north, 10 miles out for straight in runway 18, Lake Tahoe traffic. So that was CTAF, just letting any other airplanes know in this area or that might be on the ground what we are going to be doing which is straight in 1A and then we'll taxi to parking take a quick intermission while I let my dog out and uh, restart the sim and then we're going to take off and we're going to um, come out we're going to make a right turn and we're just going to pretty much circle right here until I know I'm high enough to get over that mountain range and then we'll continue on That'd be the next. So we'll have the mountain range to go over. All right, let me turn off the yaw damper. Landing lights are on. Mixture is full rich. You too? Yeah. Take an intermission. All right. Temperatures are still good. Slow down a little bit here. Lake Tahoe traffic, twin Cessna 139, one final, runway 18, full stop, Lake Tahoe traffic. All right, 
let's do 120 knots. And we'll slow down to 120. Go flaps 10 degrees. Props full. Uh, gear coming down or gear traveling as they like to say make sure it's green track gyre would help there we go Everything is good for landing. Hey, thanks for the bits, Noel. Much appreciated. feet above the ground we're just going to go to about quarter throttle flare it out all right quarter throttle and we're down ah my engines died again jeez Oh well, I don't know what the heck is deal what the deal is with that. Um, I'm just gonna stop here, and turn off the avionics. That's bad. So we do that. Those will turn off, and then brake is on. Let me get my FS economy. I don't know why the engine's quitting like that. All right, let's go. If it's economy, finish the flight. And then I'm going to take a quick break. Let me sign offline. Disconnected. And restart this sim. Maybe that will fix the engine issue as well. So I'll be back shortly, guys. I'll put this on a BRB. Back maybe uh, five minutes, five, six minutes. So I'll see you in a minute.
Connected to Pilot Edge. Okay. So I don't know if you're still there, Volt, Volt Gear, but no, I didn't. It wasn't the end of the stream. I was trying to restart the um, restart everything because I didn't have the track IR. So now you'll see I have my track IR, which is what I really need, or it helps me a lot with taxiing and doing uh, pattern work. So I can switch in between, you know, the number keys and stuff like that. Um, it's just easier to be able to have track IR. So that's one of the main reasons I wanted to restart. Plus, I don't know if there was a, an issue with the engine. I don't know why it was dying like that, but hopefully it's um, fixed. So before I forget, let's uh, go to XFS Economy and... Uh, Let's see. Hop out. Need to open up the doors again. Then we'll come up here. Start the flight. Got our fat passengers. 70 gallons of fuel. Now we'll shut these. Uh, doors except we'll add actually let's add the 50 pounds back there and we're going to take uh, two small children and two adults in the front weight and balance is set now we can close that cargo door. Hop back in here. And we'll see if where's take Lake Tahoe. Turn the fuel 
back on and we'll uh no flaps mags on shut the door All that prime our tanks. All right. This plane does not like high pressure. If the engines quit again, I'm going to file a bug report because the engines should not quit like that. Hey, Noel. Okay. So we got nav light and a rotator beacon is on. Open up the window for right now. Turn these on and we'll uh, lean out the engine. 1000 RPM. And we'll turn on our alternators, auxiliary fuel pumps, and avionics, Garmin. Oil pressure is fine. Okay. And we need Lake Tahoe's AWOS, which is 124.72. So pop that over, turn on COM2. Light and variable 30 41 more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 172.3, altimeter 3041. Wind is calm, sea tap 122.85, 22.85. And um, Oakland, actually, what's NorCal? I'll just go with I'll just go with Oakland. And Oakland is where is it? Twenty seven ninety five. One twenty seven ninety five. We'll dial in the uh, so how do I do VOR? So let's do nearest VOR Squaw Valley. Thirteen point two. Okay. S W R. So let's go. Change the CDI to Squall Valley. Go to flight plan. We're going there to Squall Valley SWR. I just want it in the flight plan. It's not that we're going to go there. Um, and then I want where are we going? We are going to MPI. That'll work. I'm 
our flaps. Squawk mode, Charlie. Um, be a bar squawking. Taxi lights coming on. We'll do an engine run up at the uh, holding short line. All right, let's go. I think the high pressure, barometric pressure, is messing with the uh, the manifold pressure, and that's why the engines are dying. With if you don't have to remember to keep power in, engines should not quit on you. But this plane is touchy. here to go off check FS economy make sure it's showing me airborne which it is always make sure your FS economy jobs are showing airborne otherwise it's all for nothing Lake Tahoe traffic twin sets to 139 taxiing to runway 16 Lake Tahoe It's one six. Lake Tahoe traffic twin system one three nine correction taxiing the runway three six Lake Tahoe. One three six. Are you still there, Volt? Yeah, that question whether or not I was gonna finish the stream earlier. Controls, free and clear and correct. do a couple loop the loops to get over those mountains but we're gonna do it we are going to do it we've got the VOR programmed in and identified SWR so that's Squaw Valley so then we can give our DME which is uh, right here 22 miles from Squaw Valley we'll wait till we get in the air to get flight following over the mountains through the woods
creatures are in the green, so we can do a run up again. Get updated on our weather. Okay. 66 Fahrenheit. I'm in the envelope, so we're good. Lake Tahoe traffic, twin Cessna 139 er taking off runway 36 for straight out departure, Lake Tahoe traffic. Do a run up on the runway, since no one's here. Close that window, turn on our lights, strobes, open up our cow flaps. Seventeen hundred RPM. Got five on the gyro. Do mag check. That engine one likes to have a drop in RPM. And I'm not going to go to full idle because that didn't work out too well for me last time. Landing lights, we're going to rotate at uh, 90. Turn on our pitot heat. Cop flaps are open, window closed, controls have been checked. Heading bug is set for runway heading. Flight plan is entered and we're taking off. Let's go. Fifty knots. Looking for ninety knots. Slight crosswind to the right. Or seventy. That's eighty. And ninety. Rotate. Positive right. Gear coming up. Back off the prop RPM out of the red. Keep the speed at about 95. Give us our best rate of climb here. And we are off. Get to about 8,000 and we'll turn around and go the other way. Make sure we're out. Reno's Charlie is up here. That's the only airspace we have to worry about in this area. Squaw Valley is now 21, 20 miles, yeah. Turn on the yaw damper. Turn up these uh, lights. Our, uh, turn here and start heading back toward the uh, direction we want to go and that should give me enough clearance to get above these mountains because we'll find out
keep an eye on the speed so we don't get too slow. Temperatures are in the green, so we're okay for this speed. We're gonna have to increase speed as the temperature goes up. Help keep the engine cool, but right now I just wanna get over these mountains. And we're gonna be heading, uh, looks like south. Due south, so it doesn't really matter, but just this direction of flight. Tanks. Switch to auxiliary here. So switch to auxiliary fuel tanks. I think uh, 10.5 should do it. I think we'll be all right at 10.5. Five. I don't know what the minimum vectoring altitudes are for uh, Oakland here, but I guess we'll find out. All right, let's set 10.5 on the altitude selector. And we'll do flight director, heading, vertical speed, um, 800. Set heading. Autopilot on. And let's see what that does. I think 10.5 is going to be high enough. Actually, I'm going to go up to 12. Maybe uh, uh, let's do 11.5. Hundred and ten knots above five thousand, so I'm gonna set IAS one ten, that way we won't stall. Turn off these lights. Come over to this and we're gonna go straight there. So if I stay on the east side, then that would be an odd number. So we'll get our flight following. So I'm going to switch to Oakland Center. Direct. Cross Olympia at 4,000. Cleared RNAV runway to approach. this engine all right so where are we at we are 27 miles from Squaw Valley I guess we are south of Squaw Valley so 
Squaw Valley is that way, so we are south. So. Oakland Center, Twin Cessna, 1399 VFR, um, 28 miles south of Squaw Valley VOR at 1500 with a request. Clear 1399 Oakland Center, Squawk 1443 IDENT. 1399 radar contact 10 miles south of Lake Tahoe uh, Airport, Lake Tahoe altimeter 3042. Go ahead. Up to, or that matches. Uh, request flight following to the Maripasa Yosemite Airport. That's uh, Mike Papa, India. Intended cruise 11500 for 1399. I'm a Cessna 310 slant golf. Thank you. Maintain appropriate VFR altitude. Maintain VFR altitudes, 1399. All right, so let's lean out the engine a little bit. And come over here, we'll lean it out. Make sure the EGT will rise. I like to set it about halfway for the altitudes that I fly at. Back off the uh, manifold pressure at about 19. We're running off of auxiliary fuel, so we'll keep an eye on that. We'll back off the prop to 25. Make sure that it is synchronized. And then now that we've got our, um, switch that to GPS and uh, we'll go to nav, whoops. I need to do a direct two, otherwise it's going to be squirrely. Direct two. Nav. Now we're going directly to it. And we are on the east side. We're between east and south. That means we're okay to be at odd plus 500. So 1,500 five, for three, anything three, on the three, east five, side. If we were flying on this uh, side, heading-wise, then we would be flying five, even plus 500, so. Uh, so we will be on the ground, and it shouldn't be too long. Let's have a... Uh, 60 miles to go. Is there a time? I guess not. And what is CTAF for this airport? Skag 33 Alpha, read back, correct? MPI, I think. Yeah. MPI. Elevation 2253. little tiny airport so I need to know the weather so 135 6 so we get a little bit closer 135 6 and like I said the elevation is 2253 hmm. 2253 so we'll say 35 say 4,000 thousand time of top of descent let's do uh, 1200 foot per minute descent so we got 13 minutes to our top of descent 
you're good. Check our temperatures. Temperatures are okay. Fuel's fine. Props good. Mixture's fine. So what we have is flight following, and that just means that the ATC lady is going to provide us radar services, um, even though we're not on a flight plan. Um, she's just, as the term goes, flight following. She's just going to make, she's going to alert me if there's any airplanes in our path. That's what, that's how that works. Really see the plane with all the background. So this is the Cessna 310, which was the main competitor against the Beechcraft Baron 58 back when they came out. So, let me see here. Definitely some breezy. You get, you get a lot of mountain uh, winds up here. Runway 8 is right traffic. Runway 26 is left traffic. So 8 is right and 26 is left. And the winds there are probably. Well, I don't know what they are. I guess we'll find out when we get there. It's like the wind sock is in the middle. The runway is 3,300 feet. Papa, thank you. Our three nine nine contact Oakland Center one two five point seven five. Oakland Center one two five point seven five. Twin Cessna one three nine nine. Two five seven five. So we're gonna go one two five seven five. Swap that over. Oakland Center Twin Cessna one three nine nine one one thousand five hundred. She'll give me a uh, altimeter. Maybe. So, 139 uh, Oakland Center, good afternoon, Columbia Altimeter 3014. 3014 for 1399. 3014. See how much difference the altimeter can make? That's another benefit to plate following. When we get a little closer, we'll get our AWOS, which is, uh, I think I already programmed that in. 135.06, yeah, I just need to swap it over when we get a little closer. So this runway is right traffic, which means you make right turns to enter this. So we're coming from south no the north yeah we're heading south 
Um, so we're coming from up here. So that means if it's right traffic, we would do a teardrop entry for runway eight. And Danwin, hey, do how you doing, bud? Good afternoon to you too. But yeah, we're gonna do a what would be a teardrop entry. So I'm gonna come over like this, and should be able to see the windsock. But I'm assuming. Well, anyway, we'll figure out what the winds are when we get closer, but if the winds are good for eight, we'll do a teardrop entry for right traffic. So we'll come over and uh, we'll enter in for the downwind. It's called teardrop when you make that loop. So it'll be a right entry and then we'll make a right base and then we'll turn final. If we're going to do two six, then we'll just come down and we'll enter for a left downwind runway two six. But I, I'm not sure which one we're going to do until we get the AWAS. And our top of descent is uh, seven more minutes. Sir, five Yankee Papa, traffic uh, nine o'clock and three miles uh, north eastbound. Doing good on this end. Hope you are too. Yeah. Yeah. So far, so good. Um, I'm probably going to do another flight tonight. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to stream it, but uh, I know if you guys like to fly on VATSIM at all, on Wednesday evenings, even if there's not a VATSIM event going on, Washington, D.C., like uh, Dulles and uh, Ronald Reagan airports usually get towered. Um, and usually you'll have like a Washington Center and a New York Center. So Wednesday evenings, I usually do some uh, Airbus a uh, action. Just because it's, they they uh, man those posi positions for training so they can train their new controllers. All right, fuel, we're still okay. Switch back to the main here shortly so I'm slowly making my way to Riverside and Los Angeles with this plane picking up FS economy jobs and route because I bought this plane um, about two weeks ago I guess for just under 300,000 through FS economy so I've been having a blast with it Friends with a few controllers there in D.C., they do a nice job. Yeah, they do. They definitely do. Um, one of the guys that occasionally follows my channel, um, he's a controller in the Washington area. Um, I cannot think of his name off the top of my head. Starts with an F, Fiverr. So his Twitch name is Fiverr, but he's also a um, trainee an ATC trainee in the Washington area and he's done you know clearance and delivery for me before at Washington so he's a good guy I haven't seen him for a while turn on these lights How's your FS career or FSE career going? It's, um, I'm pretty much broke right now. Here, I'll show you. Uh, let me go. Where's this thing at? So this is the flight I'm doing right now, obviously. So my cash balance is that. I've got 18,000 in the bank but that's because I just bought the airplane so now I have two airplanes I've got the Cheyenne I bought that for like 300 something thousand maybe it was closer to 400 thousand and then I just got this one for a really good deal um, because most of those sell for uh, let me 
see. Oops. Cessna 310. Most of these go for in the United States. See 350,000, 400,000. I got this, I got mine for less than 300,000. So I got a heck of a deal on it. That's why I'm broke right now. I couldn't let that one go. But now I own two planes, so my FS economy is like I've got a lot of money and assets, but that's about it. So I'm slowly making it. I don't have any FBOs or anything like that. How about you? Do you have uh, a whole lot of planes? Uh, I, I'm i with one um, FS Economy VA, but I, I don't use it unless I really want to fly one of his planes, like the King Air or something, but that's usually it. Gotta remember, E does not mean enough. All right, we're at a top of descent for the most part, so we're gonna start inching our way down. We're gonna switch to main fuel tank, so we're gonna go full rich, and then we'll switch to the main tanks. Temperature's fine. We're gonna close the uh, cow flaps for our no, descent. Alpha radar contact, contact departure. Altitude. We'll do uh, what? Four thousand, two, three. I'll just bring it down to four thousand gradually here, and we'll do vertical speed. Start off at five hundred feet per minute. Vertical track. For five one three three Alpha Portland departure, maintain appropriate via for altitudes. Would you like to continue flight following once you leave the trolley? And you don't need to let ATC know. If you're changing altitudes when you're VFR flight following, they don't need to know that. No, 330, would you like to continue radar services uh, once you leave the Charlie? You have, uh, Downwind has two planes and a bunch of FBOs around Illinois and Missouri. You enjoy it. So, what is to like about... And I, what is to like about FBOs? Like, I don't understand what you're supposed to do with FBOs. How do you make money with an FBO? Do you actually make the jobs? Like these passengers that I'm flying right now, are they from someone like you that made the, the passenger list or whatever? Is that how that works? I know you have to like go buy fuel and supplies and all that stuff, but I don't know how that stuff really works. You can control the destinations if you own or rent an FBO. They are generally not money makers. So what do you do to make money with the FBOs? Because I was thinking about just, you know, gradually buying these airplanes like I have been and then just trying to like lease them, I guess, like have a leasing company, but the rate I'm going, cause I don't do FS economy all the time. I probably do FS economy, maybe 30% of all my flights. So it's not something I do. My main thing is air traffic control and flying real world procedures and just trying to do everything as, you know, by the numbers as I possibly can um, to make it, you know, as lifelike as possible.
They are generally not, oh, you f fly the jobs. I keep my caravan to myself to pay for everything, but I rent out my other planes. Okay, so... So I still don't understand what benefit you get by owning... If they generally don't make money, the jobs, then what's the benefit of owning an FBO other than having to have the fun part of, you know, keeping it stocked, you know, with fuel and stuff? Is that, I guess that's the real reason people do it or? It's like we're line of sight. I might be able to pick up AWOS. Let's see. Yep. 30-10. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 25. 2.7. Altimeter 3010. We got wind 250 at 5. So that's going to favor 26. And runway 26 is left traffic. So 26 uses... Uh, I'll just use RNAV Alpha for reference. So we're going to do procedure. Um, we'll do visual 26. How about that? Give me an extended center line. We'll load. And that's all I needed. So now we have that as our reference. And. CTAF is 122.7. So let me get 122.7 set up for CTAF. 22.7 as depicted here on the chart. Mars, Mara, I'll just say Yosemite. <laughs> I can't say the other word. keep my caravan and myself, pay everything, but I rent out my other planes. Oh, I already said. FSE just gives you a reason to fly somewhere and that's yeah, all. The FBOs are places I've been near where I live. Oh, okay. So how much FS economy do you do? Is that like your main, like, do you do ATC stuff too? Do you fly online? I mean, that's like my bread and butter. I just, I like the ATC stuff. And of course, the traveling and the views. Don't get any better views in aviation than, than aviation. Oakland Center, Twin Cessna 1399. I'm descending, we can cancel advisories at this time. Squawk maintain VFR frequency change approved. Squawk maintain VFR frequency change approved. One three nine nine. We'll see you. Delta fourteen. All right. So we're going to go to Unicom. We'll switch to VFR on the squawk. FSC is about half of what I do. I also use VATSIM. Oh, okay. So when you fly on VATSIM, it looks like we're like directly over the airport, huh? All right, let me uh, figure out what I need to do here. All right, so mixture is rich. Let me turn off this autopilot. So we are over the airport, I guess. To the right, and then we'll do a uh, right turn. So the elevation here is 2253. And then I'll just call in entering uh, 45 for downwind. That's what I'll do. I'm going to mute this for a moment.
Alright. Alright, so 22, so 33. It's pattern altitude, so we're going to turn back around here in a little bit. <coughs> the wife just got home, so my dog is excited. <coughs> Alright, landing lights on. Temperatures are in the green, we're good there. That's fine. I'm going to do flaps 15, turn inbound. And then it's called Mar Mariposa. Mariposa. Mariposa traffic twin Cessna 139 entering 45 for left downwind runway 26 Mariposa traffic. All right, so that will be uh, 33,300 feet. That's what I'm going for, 3,300. Looks like it's over there. I've never been in this airport before, so I have no idea. We'll do props uh, full. I guess it might be on that ledge right above us. Huh? Turn off the yaw damper. Don't see anyone else in the pattern and no one's talking to us, so we should be uh, good to go. Mariposa traffic, twin Cessna 139. Uh, left downwind, runway 26 would be in the numbers. Mariposa traffic. All right. Keep climbing by accident. Elevation there is twenty two thousand two hundred. So we're going to do gear traveling. Three green. Flaps half. Mariposa traffic, twin Cessna 139, turning left base, runway 26, Maripo Mariposa traffic. Interesting landscape around here. This would be kind of fun on uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator since there's no 
buildings that would look like they're melted. Mariposa traffic, twin Cessna 139, turning final, full stop, runway 26, Mar Mariposa traffic. All right, flaps full. Follow the road in. easy to end up high like I did when you're not familiar with the terrain. I'll exit at the next one. Flaps out. And we're going to wait, leave that at 1000 RPM. Go left here, open up our window. Mariposa traffic, twin Cessna 139, exited the runway, taxiing the parking, Mariposa traffic over here, we'll turn off our landing lights, strobes, turn that to steady, we'll turn off our pitot heat. That's up, lean out the engine so we don't foul plugs. Getting closer to Riverside, which is gonna be my new home base for this airplane. Nicely done. Hey, thanks, Downwind. Appreciate it, bud. That's because of Orbix, but that's all right. All right, parking brake on, taxi lights off. Then um, pito heat is off. We need to turn off our avionics. So we'll turn that off. That should shut down. And then we can turn off our That's on the main, yeah, that's on main. So I can turn off the fuel pumps, turn off the alternators, turn that thing off, and then um, fuel cutoff. And then we can close that and close that. Come up here to FS Economy. Finish flight. Got credit. Check my laptop, make sure it took, which it did. Good deal. Do a replay real quick of the landing. Uh, let me complete the flight on Sim Toolkit. And then, whoops, go up here, disconnect from Pilot Edge, otherwise you'll pop up on their screen.
passenger view first, and then uh, I'll do a tower view last. This plane's fun, man. If you ever get a chance to fly this plane, it's a it's just an awesome airplane. It's the digital replica Cessna 310 Lima. 310 Lima. There's a few on the org that you can buy, uh, but this one is really, really well done. It flies great. Even has the wing flips. All right, now I'll do a tower view. But I'll be back tomorrow to do another stream. Tomorrow's my regular um, scheduled stream. The reason I chose to stream today is because I knew this was going to be a mountain flight and the weather was perfect for the VFR with flight following. So I was like, well, might as well see if other people would enjoy the views as much as I do. So tomorrow I'll be streaming a um, airliner flight on the Pout Edge network as usual. There we go. I did too like the tower view. Yeah, enjoyed it. Nice visit. Yes, sir. You too. Will you guys enjoy the rest of your day? And uh, if you guys if, um, hit the follow button, you'll know when I go live tomorrow. It will be around 2, 2.30 Eastern that I plan to fly tomorrow. And uh, like I said, it's always full ATC and all that, all that stuff. So y'all take care. Catch you next time. Chase out. Okay, what just left? Thanks, Alpha 5004. Delta 1569, contact Reno Tower, 118.7. 1870, Delta 1569, good day. Delta 5004, Ed Oscar. Delta 5004, Ed. 1569, Reno Tower, wind calm, runway 16 left, clear to land. Clear to land, 16 left, Delta 1569. Contact Oakland Center, 127.95. 2795, Delta 1432. 2291, Charlie, Squawk 0365. Squawk 0365, 91 Charlie. Got the parts today. 135, what's up? Legion 89, contact open center 121.25. Departure Southwest 175, plus 6 on the uh, departure. 